Okay, so first of all, good morning everybody and thank you for the organization for giving me this opportunity. And I'm particularly happy actually to speak right after the previous presentation because I think that the two uh, presentation are, are related, the topic is very, very close. So um, basically my presentation is about uh, new strategies that are going on in the last 10 years, I would say, to manage minor sites in Italy and particularly looking at the case study of uh, the city of Naples in southern Italy because in the last 10 years I would say that they started really to blossom a lot of uh, um, local organizations decided to have the management of what were considered minor sites. So just think that uh, the city of Naples is very close from Pompeii, so of course there is a huge, let's say it's sad to say to use this word, but that's what it is, there is a huge competition between um, funds that have to be allocated but also visitors that of course are mainly attracted by uh, a site like Pompeii for example. Um, let's say, so starting from the last 10 years, a lot of um, space has been given to private to enter the system of heritage management that I would say before in Italy was only completely managed by the public, by the state. Uh, and this uh, uh, is giving positive results for sure in, uh, in terms of open reappropriation of public spaces. So sites that were closed and not accessible for years now start to be open again and they start to be uh, once again known by not only by visitors and tourists but very often also by people living in the, in the, on, in the territory. Um, it is generating cases of creative entrepreneurship and uh, also boosting the requalification of uh, some geographical area just in southern Italy's term of employment and economic situation, quite a depressed area of Europe. But uh, there are a lot of young people that are investing in trying to start creative business, also taking management of uh, archaeological site. And then the idea is also thanks to the help of association, local organization, or profit organizations that are very rooted on the territory to uh, try to have a better community engagement. So um, there are really quite a big number of cases from the city of Naples. So, uh, so there's no time to give you the tale of all of them. I will just uh, briefly tell you something about some of the most relevant cases and that of course if you want I would be more than happy later to give you more details but the thing is that um, now there is a lot a uh, big discussion about these issues in Italy and also in literature, also in academic literature, a lot of these cases are presented as best practices because basically the, um, the elements that are evaluated that normally are just number of visitors that these places are able to attract. So, and the fact that most of these sites were closed and now they are open. So it seems that this is the only thing that matters. So I'm trying to uh, approach the problem of the management of minor sites, also looking at the criticality and, and the problems that are raising actually with these new strategies for the management. So here you have the first three examples. Once again, I will be very brief about them. Probably the San Gennaro Catacombs, which is one of the biggest pre uh, Paleo Christian sites in uh, southern Italy, is one of the best examples in terms of uh, really effective management because uh, this site is located in one of the poorest parts of the city of Naples with a huge problem with local criminality. And thanks to the help of an, organ of an NGO, basically, um, a uh, non-profit organization working on the territory, they really managed to requalify a part of the city thanks to the presence of cultural heritage, attracting people from outside that neighborhood, inside that neighborhood, and especially giving a lot of job opportunities also to the young people living in that area, like for example hiring young students to work in the in the cafeteria of the site. But in this case, they had a big support from a very powerful institution in Italy, which is the church, because the catacombs are owned not by the state in this case, but by the church. And so the Archbishop of Naples himself was wanted to be sure that this could be an opportunity for the young people of that area. So this helped them a lot to find private investors and uh, um, donors that are donating 
money to carry on this project, which is perfectly fine. I mean, because they're really doing a good job and the people working there are all employees and they have regular contracts. The other two situations are much more mm, controversial because the first one, the so-called Burbanic Tunnel, it's basically a tunnel of the 1700s, um, is managed again by a local uh, association. The problem in this case is that, for example, to, uh, to dig this uh, tunnel that was basically an underground passage uh, uh, in the city of Naples, um, dug by the, um, the king of Naples in the 1700s, no archaeologist was working during the diggings. There were just volunteers, which of course is good in terms of community engagement, but it's a scientific problem, as we all know, because there was not supervisor. And when it happened to me to talk with the manager of the uh, uh, NGO, that is um, not a heritage professional at all, which would not be necessarily be a problem. Well, but when I asked him, but was there any archaeologist supervising the work? His answer was, no, but of course, if we would have found something, we would have called the local um, officer. The problem is, is that if you're not a professional, you may not be able to recognize if you found something. The other case, um, which is really the most controversial now, uh, one, because now there is a trial going on, is underground Naples. This is basically a site where you can visit the Aqued the first century uh, AD product um, <coughs> the city of Naples. Uh, so it's a very important uh, site. Uh, now there is a, a trial going on because the, um, the chief of the association managing the site, and this is one of the most visited sites in the city. If you look on TripAdvisor, probably it's the first one, among the first one in the list. One of the employees uh, had found the courage to um, basically sue the association saying that they're all working in an illegal way. It is unreported work. They're all paid uh, at, um, cash in hand, basically. So uh, the revenues of the site ma mainly come from the hundreds of visitors that every day go there paying at more or less, if I remember correctly, 10 euro tickets, but they have no contract. They, so of course they have a lot of revenues. Just think that uh, um, the own, let's say the chief of the uh, NGO has opened a, in the last year a pizzeria, pizza place, and a BNB, probably with the revenues coming from the uh, <laughs> from the heritage side. So now, the, of course, we cannot. Uh, there is a trial going on, so we will see what the judges will say. We cannot. Uh, um, give answer. We have to wait for the judges to do their job. But for sure, there is a, a b very big controversial problem in this case. Uh, the other two, very, very briefly, in the case of the Pausilipo Archaeological Park and Gaiola Underwater Park, which are managed by a local onlus, I would say I won't be very long because I would say that the situation is very similar to the situation that was described in the previous case. It's very much the same situation a very big effort to try to reopen and to give back to the city. And this it's an important site. This was the um, seaside villa of the Emperor Augustus. So, it, I mean, it, it's weird that, to think that it is considered a minor site, but this is how it is, with underwater heritage that you can see simply by swimming. In this, in this case, the problem is that the NGO working in this area since 10 years is left completely by itself. They are not the real manager authority, but they have to fight every day with fishermen that want to illegally fish in the underwater park, damaging, of course, with nets and boats the underwater structures. And they are completely by themselves fighting a war that should not be fought by a, an NGO, or at least if it was the real manager authority, it would have been possible because they would have the means. But they cannot, for example, give fine to people that or you know, they cannot make any kind of punishment to people that try to legally enter. They, the only thing they can do is to try to call um, the police or someone to enter, but they are completely left by themselves. Also in terms of maintenance of the, of the archaeological area, they have to take care of cleaning the area, of keeping cleaning uh, the area, cutting the grass in the on-land part of the site completely by themselves. So of course they have to rely a lot on volunteers. Uh, which are a lot, but uh, it's a very difficult situation, similar to the one we, we, we saw before. And then the church of the Saint Philip and um, Giacomo in the city center of Naples. This is another interesting case because this is a site uh, that uh, 
also this side has an old, um, an old. This uh, is a 16th century, 1600 church, but also with in the um, in the so-called Terra Santa. So in the underground part of the uh, of the church, there is also uh, an archaeological area, and this place is run by a group of uh, very young. Um, uh, student. Well, no, actually, they're not students anymore, but very, very young professionals. They uh, have just finished this study and they have a lot of enthusiasm. But the problem is that also in this case, they are very aware, they were very honest in telling me that uh, they are managing to get some uh, donations and some money to restore the, the church that was closed since uh, many, many years. Um, they are doing a lot of job to um, a very good job in communicating these places to the uh, community and also in uh, engaging uh, school children from the area. But they are very, very honest in saying we cannot live on that. Basically, this is uh, something that now we can do because we are very young. We don't have uh, our own family yet, but we are really facing the problem to think what. So also in this case, they are completely by themselves doing this job and they are seriously thinking whether in the next years they will be able to continue doing this job. So um, I just wanted very briefly to present you these cases because I think that um, in presenting this um, so-called bottom-up approach when you um, hire and you call local association to work and to collaborate with the Ministry of Culture for the management of the so-called minor side, which is true, are really under-evaluated and really under-supported uh, in Italy in this moment. Uh, so in uh, talking in, uh, about these cases, I think that very often the problem is that the discussion is only about the results in terms of visitors and in terms of accessibility. It's true, now these places are accessible, there are people going, but there is not discussion about the real economic sustainability of these places. Because, for example, if professionals that are heritage professionals are forced to work without being paid, in that case, shall we really consider that they are working or are they volunteers? And so, is it fair that a volunteer, a volunteer should be someone that does another profession decide to give some of its free time to support an NGO? not a professional that is doing his job without being paid for doing that. And um, of course, this is a rhetoric question, but is it unreported and cashing had job, a real job? Of course it is not. It's illegal, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> so it is not. So um, first of all, um, of course, the big challenge now, it's also the competition, because just think that all the sites I've just presented to you are in the urban area of the same city, so they are very close one from the other. So another thing that now is missing is, the, mm, is a network between all these associations working on the territory to try to work together to look for grants and to look for uh, sponsored donors and support. This is something that is happening, but again, what is missing is probably the institutional support to do this, like creating roundtables and meetings to help them to work together. And then the question is, what is this responsibility of the public manager authority. Because if I am the state and I am the owner of, of course, of an heritage site, and I give that heritage site in, uh, I entrust someone else to take care of that heritage site, I should control if the workers in that place are working in legal working conditions. I should control and I should monitor whether archeological works are going on with uh, the presence of a qualified archaeologist. I think this is responsibility. Still, it is the responsibility of the manager of authority. So for sure, uh, in, in Italy, but not just in Italy, in, uh, um, in Europe, in, in the heritage field, everywhere, there was a very big need for community engagement because as it was raised in some of the previous pre presentation, of course, public and especially uh, Citizens' awareness on the importance of heritage is the first thing we need for conservation and for um, promoting our heritage, but first of all for its preservation and also for its meaning, because if no one consider it heritage, heritage, heritage is not heritage anymore. Uh, and for sure there was a need to reopen abandoned space and to uh, let them be uh, accessible for people again. and. Uh, Definitely, uh, especially in Italy, we need to find new strategies to manage the 
minor sides, since most of the funds are attracted by the big sides. Everyone knows that, of course, need a lot of money to be managed, and so very la very little is left to the minor side. But I think what is so this is, let's say, my takeaway after the presentation is that what is really needed and probably is missing right now are the real sustainability study because also when there are the call for uh, call for NGO that want to take care of a, of a site or want to have the management of a site, before to give them the possibility to manage the site, really in the call there should be really sustainability, they should be asked to give real sustainability studies on the financial possibility, but also what it can be do and what can the uh, manager authority do to support the organization. Then, of course, need for constant monitoring, which is, of course, this is a problem because the Ministry of Culture, as it was said, has always less funds. So, of course, also to control what happens on the territory it becomes more and more difficult. But constant monitoring is definitely uh, necessary. And the public manager should really still continue to play his role because what I think is that in the end to untrust someone else doesn't mean to abandon that side and to abandon the ownership and the, uh, and the management completely of that side. So at least as an institutional support that should be, it, ha it has to continue to be um, present if we want to keep using these strategies of entrusting local and territorial NGO to um, to support and to manage minor sites. So thank you very much.